Good morning, folks. I said I was going to do this every day, so here I am again. So yesterday, uh, the day job again consumed a lot of my time. Unfortunately, I would much rather be stacking rocks, and I'd be having a lot more fun at it than doing what I do. I mean, there's nothing wrong with programming, but I'd rather be stacking rocks. I like to stack rocks, actually. I like to build things out of rocks. Dry stone masonry is a hobby of mine. Um, so as far as prospects, I did communicate with a few people online and uh, poured my heart out to them a little bit on how I thought that they would be amazing for this, that they were perfect, um, they like to help people and all that. So put the message out there, planted a seed at least, we'll see how, if it grows. And uh, I had a car salesman that I mentioned before that I was supposed to have an appointment with. Well, all of a sudden... He got called into work on his day off, which I should probably remind him that's pro <laughs> that's a good reason to start doing this, too. It's ridiculous. Your day off. You don't know how to do day offs if you're going to work on your day off. But anyway, we chatted back and forth. I said, okay, that's fine. Just let me know when you're available. And he uh, basically uh, kept feeding me a little, kept throwing me bones, but yet eluded me. And at a certain point, toward the end of the day, I felt like I'm chasing this guy. I, don't, I shouldn't be chasing people. And so I, I decided I'm just going to, you know, I've told him what I've told him. I'm just going to leave it on him to get back with me. And then some words that I heard in the EA came back to haunt me. Relentless follow-up. And I've heard Scary Sherry say relentless follow-up. So I guess I'm confused in my mind right now about what's the difference between chasing somebody and having relentless follow-up what is the difference if anyone can tell me I would sure appreciate it uh, give me a little insight into the difference there I don't want to be a chaser and I know that we're not we just we're the messenger right we give the message if people reject it we say thank you call me if your mind changes so what is with this relentless follow-up then how does that fit into that mindset <clears throat> um, the other thing that happened toward the evening uh, we have a Thursday meeting tonight is the meeting an in-home meeting and we had two couples who said they're coming well, one of those couples contacted my wife and told her oh we forgot about a, uh, a co school concert so we can't come now this is of course not the first time this has happened with this couple so I'm starting to get real discouraged because this in that sense because this lady is very sick very sick she knows she's very sick my wife has told her we have something that can help you you have to come you have to hear this now of course we need to do our part now and probably just schedule something in her home um, but it discourages me how smart people, we know they're smart. This lady's a nurse, which makes it even more ridiculous in my mind and discouraging. How do smart people not see what we're telling them? How can we show it to them? They acknowledge it, and then they behave as though we just showed them a blank piece of paper. How do smart people do this? And that's, I think that might be one of the reasons I'm reluctant to talk to a lot of my uh, closer acquaintances, because I'm afraid if I tell them, I show them this, and they reject it outrightly, I'm going to lose some respect for them because of their inability to see this, to understand and comprehend. Now, of course, I know that in saying that, I am wrong. I must be wrong, because that doesn't sound right. But it is how my brain works, and I'm wondering... Um, you know, I'm discouraged about the human, the human race in general. Are blind as bats. You, and, and already, just in the short time I've been in, I've led a lot of these people to the water. Some of them, I've pushed their face into the water. And yet, they don't drink. Now, I understand that with kids. That, I'm used to that with the kids, actually. But adults, grown adults, smart, professional adults, I don't get it. And to me, it's very discouraging. And I know there has to be a way, probably, to detach myself 
Now I know we're supposed to be emotionally detached from the response. Makes sense to me with a stranger. With, a, with someone I know and I'm acquainted with, I have a much harder time doing that. Family, friends, business associates. I mean, I work with some intelligent people, programmers. And the first time I showed them this, anything about it, man, n nobody was harsher on me than them. Nobody was blinder than they were. It was, it was uh, unbelievable. So this has been one of my biggest hurdles so far, is, uh, is being, dis I guess, in a sense, disgusted with the human race and their blindness to their own health, their own, the fact that their own meat house, their body, is a machine that needs to be maintained and it has needs in order to function properly. How do they not understand this? They walk around in a, I don't know, it's kind of like in a daze. So anyway, um, of course I'm going to start over today. Every day is a new day. And I'm not going to let the events from yesterday affect the present. Oh, and one good thing that did happen though, at the end of the night, I took a few of my kids out to a place called Bubba's Burgers. And my waitress was very... Uh, she was very articulate, very intelligent. She was, she had a great personality, and she was authentic with us. I could tell. So uh, before we left, I gave her my card. I complimented her on her uh, service for to us from her heart, and how she was obviously intelligent. I gave her my card. Said, if you're open to other opportunities, call me. And she was very grateful to get the card and said, I will call you in the morning. So now I'm a little nervous about what I'm going to say when she calls me. Because uh, this is actually the first time I've done that and had someone say, I will. <laughs> so actually I rehearsed it driving all the way home. It was like a 40 minute drive. And before I knew it, I was home and I hadn't stopped talking to myself. Fortunately, it was at night so nobody could see me. But yeah, it, it helps to rehearse, I think. So... Okay, well that's my log for the day. If anyone has input on some of the things that are weighing upon me, uh, please feel free to share. Uh, you, uh, yeah, just leave a comment or contact me in, in some other way. Uh, if you Google my name, you'll probably find a lot of things. And I'm on Facebook too, and I could use more friends. So friend me, Doug Bowd. Thank you.